Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Mandy. Today's video is the second video in a two-part series about getting your real estate license in North Carolina. If you missed the first video, I will include a link at the end of this one, and there's also a link card up above. A quick recap, in the first video, we went from, I wanna become a real estate agent to going through the pre-licensing course and looking at each step and the cost involved. So if you've gotten that far, congratulations. You are now a provisional broker. You can conduct business helping people buy and sell real estate and you can earn income. And just a, a quick spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen the first video, the amount of money that I spent to go from, I wanna become a real estate agent to, completing the pre-licensing course where I can now earn income with $632.04. That's all itemized in the first video. So you're probably wondering, where do I go from here? And what does it mean being a provisional broker? A provisional broker means that you can still perform all of the functions as an actual full broker, but you have a few limitations on you. So you kind of have a temporary license until you complete the post licensing courses. And there are three post licensing courses. Each one is 30 hours long. So that's 30 times three, that's 90 hours of education. You are still required to complete so that you can drop the P as they say, and no longer be a provisional broker broker, but instead just be a broker. The classes are generally take about two weeks to complete, depending upon how they're uh, structured. You can go three or four days a week and a couple hours a day, and you must pass an exam for each of those classes. But don't worry, it's not as intense as taking the pre-licensing exam at your school or with the North Carolina Real Estate Commission. Where I took my classes was at the GO School where I completed all of my education. We had to get a 75 to pass. If we didn't pass, we got a second chance at getting that 75. But you do have to pass an exam for each of the three post-licensing courses. You must complete the this education requirement within 18 months months of getting your license issued. To give you an example, my license was issued in November of 2021. I had 18 months to get those courses done. However, I affiliated with eXp Realty and eXp Realty requires you to get your post licensing done within six months. So that's what I've been busy doing for the last six months or so, uh, fulfilling all of my post licensing education requirements. So now I've dropped the P and I'm no longer a provisional broker, I am a broker. So let's take a look at those classes. You do not have to take them in numerical order. I actually took post licensing 303 first because it met my schedule at that particular time. The classes basically dive deeper into these topics because they're so critical to our performing our duties as real estate agents. But you'll notice that the material is quite similar to what we went over in pre-licensing. It's just going into a lot more detail. You'll see here that I paid less for my 303 class than I did for my other two. The reason for that is I was so happy with my pre-licensing course taught by Rob at the Go School that I wanted to leave a Google review because I had found out about the school on Google anyway. So after leaving the review, the school notified me that I was entitled to a 20% discount off my first post-licensing class in addition to my alumni discount. And I think that was 20% for the review, 12% for the alumni discount. So this first course was heavily discounted. And then the other two courses that I took, again, with the Go School were at 192.72. So the total cost for my post-licensing classes was 534.36. Altogether, my real estate education with the state of North Carolina cost 1,166.40. And then that was altogether dropping the P. One more one-time cost I wanna tell you all about. You will most likely be required, like myself, to join a real estate association in your area. And I was required to join the Raleigh Regional Association of Realtors. With that, I have to pay a one-time application fee of $300. You may have heard of NAR, the National Association of Realtors. The way I understand it, by joining your local association, you will be connected to NAR and you will be entitled to a lot of realtor benefits, programs, and a community of support as you pursue your real estate career. So that's a one-time fee just to apply to your local association in total, my one-time costs are $1,466.40. Now that we've got our one-time costs established, let's take a look at those annual costs. 
with that Raleigh Regional Association, that application fee was one time, but I also have to pay annual dues to be a member of the association at $541. Now that amount is prorated depending upon what time of year you join. I also have to become a member of the Triangle MLS. There are several different MLSs in North Carolina. This is the one that I will be a member of. The annual dues are 600. The good thing about this is that I don't have to pay it all in one lump sum. I can pay per quarter. For example, if I'm not going to be active selling real estate for one particular quarter, I can save $150 for that time of the year. I also have to pay $45 every year to renew my license with the commission. I got licensed in November of 2021 and I had to pay my renewal fee in May of this year at $45. Lastly, there is this privilege license fee that we have to pay as real estate agents here in North Carolina to the Department of Revenue. I don't know much about it, but certain professions have to pay this fee and it's $50. So the annual costs come to a total of $1,236. Altogether with the one-time costs, we're looking at $2,702.40. Turning to monthly costs, I have affiliated with eXp Realty. By doing so, I now have to pay an $85 monthly technology fee to the brokerage for all of the platforms that they make available to us so that we can conduct our business. Also, I plan on paying a $10 fee to Constant Contact so that I can create a newsletter and stay in touch with my sphere. As a side note, being an agent at eXp Realty, we have access to a system called KV Core. It's a very robust CRM or customer relationship management platform in addition to a lead generation system. I don't know all that much about it. I'm kind of learning as I go and making these videos. I'm thinking that I can probably send out a newsletter from KV Core and not be a member of Constant Contact or have a subscription to Constant Contact but I do know a friend that's using Constant Contact. I'm just gonna go that route now, and as I learn more, I might just send out a newsletter from KV Core if we have that option to us. If it's free, I definitely wanna look into it. Moving to the phone line. EXP Realty does give us a free phone line with Ring Central. However, the phone line is an 800 number, and being a for somebody who works on the phones, I know that most people probably are not going to answer a phone call from an 800 number. I've already asked to see if I could turn that number into a local number, and I was told no. So I will not be using the free Ring Central number that were provided. I'm looking into some phone apps. I've looked into Sideline. There's a Burner phone app. It's actually a phone app called Burner Phone, Google Voice. So I'm looking at some options so that I can separate my personal line from my business line. Now let's take a look at how I'm going to be generating my business. I will have to pay for the cost of a dialer. I've been using Mojo for the last five years. I'll probably stay with them. They charge $99 for a single line dialer or $149 for a triple line dialer. I'll probably go with the single line dialer. Red X also has a single line dialer. I don't know if they have triple line and their fees are comparable to Mojo. And then with regards to data, I know I'll be calling on FISBOs and expireds because as you all know, I think those are great. So I'll be incurring fees there. I can also purchase geo leads, which is if you're wanting to farm a particular neighborhood and service the homeowners there, you can get a list of the um, phone numbers in that particular neighborhood. Then there's also the FURBOs or the for rent by owners the investors that are renting out their properties. Looks like those call lists are a little bit more expensive at $80. I just got this information from the Reddix website. So as I'm trying to size up what my costs are, this is what I'm looking at. Now, if you don't wanna work the phones and you wanna pay maybe on the back end after you close a property, there's some options there for you. I don't truthfully know how Zillow works, but I do know that Street Easy, you can get a lead and then pay on the back end when you close. I think it's 25%, 35%, I don't really know. I do know with Opsity, it is up to 35%. Might start off with a couple of those leads, but I don't recommend doing that long-term. I really think if you work on your lead generation skills, this will be a lot more profitable for you and you'll be keeping the costs down, which is very important. So what are my first year costs going to be as a first time agent? I have to tell you that making this video has been very helpful to me as I'm trying to help you because I'm really getting a good understanding of what I'm walking into. When we look at those costs, we are not taking into consideration these items. 
marketing of the properties, photos, videos, signs, floor plan staging, everything that I'm going to need in my marketing budget. Haven't gotten that far yet. Office supplies, automobile expenses, client closing gifts, wardrobe, etc. We're just going to summarize what we've been discussing up to this point. So this is what it looks like. In full, I am looking to pay at least with these items aside, $6,350.40 a year, or at least in my first year. The good thing is that these one-time costs, roughly about $1,500, are going to go away after this first year, but I will always have these annual costs and these monthly costs going forward. And there's one thing that eXp impresses upon us as we do our onboarding. We are now business owners as real estate agents. We always have to be mindful of the money that's going out and the money that's coming in. I am getting a good understanding of my numbers right now so that I know what I need to do to achieve my goals. And I'm really hoping that looking at these numbers closely in this video is going to help you start thinking along those lines as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please leave me a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing to the channel. As promised, I will include a link to video number one. I'll see you next time.